Today we're going to be going over being a juror, and this all comes out of a jury handbook. It is online uh, with the anti-government movement guidebook that I have talked about in a previous video. They have everything in this handbook except for the actual constitution itself. I think that's kind of funny. They probably just don't want their judges and attorneys reading the real constitution. So, uh, let's get started here. In March, in March 1775, Patrick Henry rode into a small town of Culpeper, Virginia. Patrick Henry saw a man getting beat to the bones of his rib cage with whips laced with metals. He asked what the man did to deserve this beating. The reply given to him was that the man being scourged was a minister who refused to take a license. He was one of twelve who were locked in jail because they refused to take a license. A license often becomes an arbitrary control by government that makes a crime out of what would ordinarily not be a crime. It turns a right into a privilege. Three days later, the scourged, they scourged him to death. This, after this, uh, Patrick Henry wrote this little piece of article right here, where he first coined the term, give me liberty or give me death. Freedom for William Penn. Edward Bushel and three fellow jurors learned this lesson well. They refused to bow to the courts. They believed in the absolute power of the jury, though their eight companions cowered to the courts. The four jurors spent nine weeks of torture in prison, often without food or water, soaked with urine, smeared with feces, barely able to stand, and even threatened with fines, yet they would not give in to the judge. Edward Bushel said, My liberty is not for sale. Though he had a great wealth and commanded an international shipping enterprise, these bumbleheads, so the court thought, proved the power of the people was stronger than any power of government. They emerged total victors. The First Amendment, the year 1670, and the case Bushel sat on was of that of William Penn. He was on trial for violation of the Conventional Act, this was an elaborate act which made the Church of England the only legal church. The act was struck down by their not guilty vote. Freedom of religion was established and became part of the English Bill of Rights, and later it became the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. In addition, the right of peaceful assembly was founded, freedom of speech, and also habeas corpus. The first such writ of habeas corpus was issued by the Court of Common Pleas, was used to free Edward Bushel. Later, this trial gave birth to the concept of freedom of the press. Had Bushel and his colleagues yielded to the guilty verdict sought by the judge and prosecutor, William Penn most likely would have been executed as he clearly broke the law. He broke the law, then there would have been no Liberty Bell, no Independence Hall, no City of Philadelphia, and no state of Pennsylvania, for William Penn, founder of Pennsylvania and leader of the Quakers, was on trial for his life. His alleged crime was preaching and teaching a different view of the Bible than that of the Church of England. This appears innocent today, but then one could be executed for such actions. He believed in freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and the right to peaceful assembly. He had broke the government's law, but he had injured no one. Those four heroic jurors knew that only when actual injury to someone's persons or property takes place is there a real crime. No law is broken when no injury can be shown. Thus, there can be no loss or termination of rights unless actual damage is proven. Many imposter laws were repealed as a result of this case. This trial made such an impact that every colony but one established the jury as first, liberty to maintain all other liberties. It was felt that the liberties of people could never be wholly lost as long as the jury remained strong and independent, and that unjust laws and statutes could not stand when confronted by conscientious jurors. 
Jurors today face an avalanche of imposter laws. Jurors not only have the power and the right, but also the duty to nullify bad laws by voting not guilty. At first glance, it appears that it is almost unfair the power jurors have over government, but necessary when considering the historical track record of oppression that government wields have have wielded over private citizens. Here's the page on jury duty, but I just kind of want to point out the pecking order, the true pecking order in this nation, how it was meant to be as a republic. First, God created man. Second, man, that's you, created the Constitution. Constitution created government, and government created corporations, etc. It goes on to talk about you have three votes in a republic. And that's the ballot box. Second is the grand jury, which is why I think it's so important for us to bring the common law grand jury back, which can hold corporations and government accountable for what they do to the people. And then the third is the power of being a juror in and of itself. Jury rights. The jury has the right to judge both the law as well as the fact and controversy. Law of the land. The U.S. Constitution is the supreme law of the land, and any statute to be valid must be in agreement with the U.S. Constitution. Where rights secured by the Constitution are involved, there can be no rulemaking or legislation which should abrogate them. That's Miranda versus Arizona. That's where you get your Miranda rights from. Jury tampering. A jury's rights, powers, and duties. The charge of, to the jury in the first jury trial before the Supreme Court of the United States illustrates the true power of the jury. In the February term of 1794, the Supreme Court conducted a jury trial and said, It is presumed that the jurors are the best judges of fact. It is, on the other hand, presumed that the courts are the best judges of law, but still... Both objects are within your power of decision. You have the right to take it upon yourself to judge both and to determine the law as well as the facts and controversy. Your vote counts. You are not a rubber stamp. There lies the opportunity for the accomplishment of liberty and justice for all. If you and numerous other jurors throughout the state and nation begin and continue to bring in verdicts of not guilty in such cases where a man-made statute is defective or oppressive, these statutes will become in, as in effect as if they had never been written. Jury of Peers. Our forefathers felt in order to have justice, it is obvious that a jury of peers must be people who actually know the defendant. How else would they be able to judge motive and intent? Peers of the defendant, like the rights of the jury, have also been severely tarnished. Originally, it meant people of equals in station and rank, blacks, 1910, freeholders of a neighborhood, Beauvillars, 1886, or a companion, a fellow, an associate, Webster's Dictionary, 1828. Now, I would just like to share with you what I think is a constitutional law, or what is not a constitutional law, and I just base this off of the preamble to the Constitution, we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ens ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our prosperity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. When we make laws to prosecute people for free will choice, say such as drug charges, in my mind, that does not help form a more perfect union. It does not ensure domestic tranquility, and it surely does not secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves. So I find any law like that to be unconstitutional. Now, this is just my opinion. But 
this is the way that I think. I also think that speeding laws are unconstitutional. I think any law that affects somebody in a negative way is unconstitutional unless they actually caused harm or injury to another human being. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you stay with me for my next video. I think it'll probably be the best one yet. I won't be talking about law that much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Also, please go to the link I post below uh, where you can read the full document minus the actual text of the Constitution if you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you. Bye-bye.